Let's keep it short and sweet. Is Adidas Boost dead? No. What's good YouTube, Ash Bash, back again with another episode of Ash Bash Waffles On. And today's subject is about Boost. Is it dead or nah? Uh, as I said in the title of this video, I would say nah off the jump because it's obviously not super dead like people still care a bit but the hype for it has died big time for the shoe so let's kind of like start off at the beginning of boost how it sort of started and sort of go from there and see where they kind of went wrong with it so the boost technology sort of came out i believe it was 2012 where it was introduced with the adidas energy boost obviously that was just a running silhouette people cared about it but not that much, didn't come into like the lifestyle sort of look at the time. Then there was the Pure Boost, then one sort of popped off a bit, because obviously Kanye West was rocking them, so you could tell like, that was a big deal. He was rocking the Pure Boost, people wanted the Pure Boost. Pure Boost started like selling out, and then people started talking about how comfortable they were. Then there was rumors of Boost being in Kanye's new sneakers. Then he revealed the 750s, the 750s have Boost in them. But because the boost in the 750s, it wasn't really like a visible boost. So your average sort of sneaker lover who just sees sneakers and likes them, they wouldn't really know what boost is or what it sort of means. It wasn't really until the Ultra Boost came out, which was after the 750s. Pretty much like, I think it was the same month they released, the Ultra Boost came out and that was sort of like the consolation prize. Like if you wanted a pair of dope sneakers that had boost in it, the Ultra Boost 1.0s were there. But again, people weren't like running and just flying down to the shelves to go and get a pair. I know I wasn't. I don't think I knew one person personally who had a pair of Ultra Boost 1.0s. Everyone slept on them until the sort of Kanye West pictures come out and then people sort of wanted them. The triple whites, the original blacks, but they sold out. So sort of people, they did, not that they didn't care about it, but they just had no chance of getting it. Then I believe the 350s came out next. Obviously they had Boost again. But the same thing, the boost is hidden. People didn't really know too much about the boost with that. Then the NMDs came out. NMDs were a certified banger. I, again, didn't see the big deal at the time. I hadn't tried them on, I hadn't tried any ultra boost. Didn't see what the big deal was, but I knew that they sold out and they look okay to me. It wasn't until the glitch pair came out, the black and white glitch pair. I think I tried for them, I failed. I remember I went to Five Guys in Angel and I saw some dude rocking them and I was like, those are fire. Went online and it was like some crazy prices on eBay and stuff, so <clears throat> that wasn't an option. Then it wasn't like until like a few months later maybe, I just came from the gym, walked past like Foot Asylum in Westfield, Stratford. Not like a shop that normally has heat or anything like that. And I saw like a couple NMDs on the shelf and I was like, is this the sneaker that everyone sort of like cares about? I remember I took a picture of it, put it on Twitter, and I was like, these are just hair, I could just walk in and get a pair. I thought these were like a rare sneaker, but it turns out Adidas sort of went for like a general release of the NMDs, not the OG colorway, but various other colorways. And that's when everybody sort of jumped on the boat, just started seeing everyone rocking NMDs. People heard, kept hearing about how comfortable they were. They were accessible, they looked quite dope. They had the Boost, which people keep hearing about from the Yeezys, the Ultra Boost. And that sort of became a thing. Popularity of it went sky high, super sky high. So when the Ultra Boost 2.0s came out, I was like, day one, ugh, trying to cop a pair. Didn't realize that it was gonna be like an easily accessible shoe. So when I bought the Ultra Boost 2.0s, I think it was off adidas.co.uk or wherever the site is. Gas to get them. Then I went to Westwood that same day to see my girlfriend. Went into like Foot Locker and it was just on the shelf and I was like, I thought this was like a rare thing. Turns out, general release, everybody can get a pair if they want a pair. And then from then on, they went to the 3.0s. I thought they were dope as well, and the 4.0s. That's sort of when people sort of, sort of stopped caring at all. Like, reselling 4.0s is pretty much a non-existent thing. Unless they do some sort of super collab, I don't think anyone's gonna care again. And that's what Adidas have done, unfortunately. They've released too many pairs, too many colorways. The fact we're on a 4.0 already, is ridiculous. They came out in what, 2015? The Ultra Boost? To be on 4.0 already is a bit 
over the top and they've just saturated the market. There's like a billion colorways of that shoe. And it's sort of just died down. I think the only thing they can do to sort of recover and get some hype again, only if the Ultra Boost is bring out the 1.0s. I think if they brought that out, people would go mad for it again. Cause like, as I said, hardly anyone really got the pairs. Like people that were in the know, ahead of the game, got a couple pairs, they still got them. Probably beat, probably on their last legs at the moment. But most people didn't get the Ultra Boost 1.0. So if they released that again, the hype would come back for that shoe, but it kind of seems to be a bit over. Like the EQT 9317 came out. I thought they were fire, but to be honest, the comfort of them, for me personally, it wasn't like super duper. Not the actual boost itself. The boost itself is fire, but the actual fit of the shoe itself didn't work for me. And I thought they were gonna bang properly because I think they actually look like a cool shoe, but you just look on shelves now and fire colorway is that. If this was like three years ago, they'd be going for crazy, man. Like a triple black EQT 9317. Super fire kick. It's got kind of Yeezy sort of pattern on it. Black boost, super dope. But now you can just go into any shop and cop it for probably like 80 pounds, something like that. It's a weird time, like sneakers that usually would go for crazy amounts, going for the low low. It's literally only a collab like, and only certain collabs that are doing well. I've got the Mastermind, uh, 9317s, super gassed to get them. And then they'll be in restocked all the time. You can buy them anytime. You'd think Mastermind, Adidas, 9317, new silhouette would be a big deal, but not that many people cared. I think I was only one of the few people that did care. Gasta got my pair, but still it is dying a slow death. My last pair of NMDs. I got, um, I think it was last year, was NMD R2s. The R2 line didn't do too well either. Don't see many people at all wearing the GRs of them. I recall again, when the original R2s came out, I think it was like an olive colorway. People kind of cared. I went on eBay the day that they came out and I saw pairs on there for like 200. And I remember walking to Offspring in like Brick Lane and they were just sitting on the shelves. Loads of pairs, like, that's what happens with these new pairs. People just try their luck and put it on eBay, see if they can get a quick score, because people assume these new things are gonna sell out, but some models just don't bang. Then they brought out the NMD Racer, I think it's called. That tanked big time. Most people, for one, haven't even seen it, and two, nobody's bought it. I know it retailed for 150. I've seen it in Offspring now for 99, and that's a sign of the times for Boost. Yay kills it with the Boost. He is probably one of the only people that can sort of spark life into a shoe that people don't care about. I think if he went on a spree of just rocking like 93 17s in different colorways, he'd probably start seeing those pairs start selling. But otherwise, people are just not caring at the moment. And Jordan Brand and Nike have gone super duper hard. Just look at the releases that have come out from Jordan and Nike this year. Shadow Ones, the Tinkers, the JTH, Gold Toes, Atmos from the Nike Air Max. It's just the weather spoons. It's just too much heat at the moment. People aren't even caring about Adidas like that. Just think about it, like this D-Rup that's come out recently. I've seen about two people maybe rock that shoe and it just look weird, plain weird. I wouldn't be surprised if they chucked on some boost on it, but it is a budget shoe, so they might not do it. They've chucked on boost onto everything else. They've got boost on like Stan Smiths and all sorts of stuff, so. I don't know. They've got this 4D stuff coming out. It doesn't seem like at the moment anyway, it's gonna be a consumer sort of friendly thing where they're gonna make mass pairs of it. Not anytime soon anyway, so. Is it over for Boost? I said no, but it's not on for Boost. They're not getting any like stronger. Uh, and obviously there's another thing, timeless. Is the Ultra Boost 1.0 timeless? Is it timeless silhouette? NMD timeless silhouette? Not really, it was cool at the time, but like, just look at what most people care about. Like I just said, the Shadows, that's a Jordan 1. That's from the 80s. Air Max 1 from the 80s. People still fucking with them shoes. Will the NMD and the Ultra Boots, will people care in like 20 years time or whatever? I don't know. Anywho, tell me what you think. Is Boost dead? Do you still care about Boost? Are you looking for 
Another pair of Ultra Boost. Ultra Boost 1.0s came out. Would you be super gassed? Would you care? Has Yeezy killed Boost with the 350 V2s? Like a million pairs of them. Is that saturating the market? Is the Yeezy brand dead? Like, tell me what you think in the comments. This is me, Ash Bash, waffling on, like waffle on once again. Follow me on Instagram, Ash Bash Sneakers, link down below, and Twitter as well, Perfection7. I'm out. See you next week. Hey.